there's this awesome thing called ask. And when I have my clients that get stuck, like, Andy, what do I do? This is not converting, this is not selling, but blah, blah, blah. I go, have you asked your clients what they want? No. Yeah. Cool. So you can create a series called Ask, what's your name? Ted. Ted? Yeah. Ask Ted. <laughs> And then here's the thing, Ted, like you can, you can be perfect. Being vulnerable is a superpower. And if you haven't figured that out yet, please figure it out. Being wildly vulnerable will get you exactly what you want and you cut through all the BS. So if you're like, hey, what's happening, guys? You know what? I love you. Um, I'm struggling with what you guys want to see from me right now. Please leave in the comments below just, just something you might want to either know about me or what I'm about. And you'll watch. Now you have two months worth of content to create. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can't expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners, it's success to me. Giving the best of me, my living legacy. What's up guys, welcome to My Living Legacy. Excited for this episode. We're gonna give you a behind the scenes look at an event called GVL Hustle. It's here in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, started by myself and a good friend, uh, Ryan Alford. And uh, it's a networking event, kind of an anti-networking networking event, but we had the absolute pleasure of having my dear friend, Andy Dane Carter, speak at this event. I think you're gonna get a ton of value uh, out of what he had to say in the Q&A following. So enjoy My Living Legacy. When it came to uh, us talking about uh, social media and building a personal brand at GBL Hustle, uh, Ryan and I, you know, initially we we're like, well, we'll just get up there and, and talk about it because we've we've been doing it for a little while and we've had some successes, but it worked out for us to be able to have Andy here, and I could not be more excited because this guy is taking it to a whole nother level. Uh, like when when I have a question about like a Facebook ad, he's like, well, you know, my, my team member she used to run ads for for Facebook, I'm like that's a good source to learn about Facebook ads. Like, let's, let's do that. And so he's a wealth of knowledge, but he's just a genuinely good man. Uh, incredible father, incredible husband. And it's been an absolute delight for me to, to get to know him more and more. Um, he's here for like literally 24 hours. Just came in, they had a midnight flight out of LAX to get here, came straight from the airport uh, for some meetings today and straight here. Uh, this is gonna be something that is gonna be really tactical. So his entire goal is for tomorrow, you'd be able to implement something and put it into use and have it actually benefit. And then the Q&A afterwards, we want it to be even more tactical where any of those questions that you have, there's no stupid question and there's no question too high level. Um, anything in between, uh, any questions that you have as you're you know, building out your personal brand, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these different things, um, he's gonna touch on those. So uh, I couldn't be more excited uh, myself to hear from him. This is Mr. Andy Dane Carter. I grew up in Long Beach, California. I grew up super poor, poor, poor. Like raised by a single mom. We lived in a little teeny tiny studio. We didn't have a fridge, we lived out of a cooler. We had nothing. So I learned pretty young that if I wanted something, <clears throat> I was gonna have to go get it or at least work or hustle or figure it out, which is why it's like, yeah, we're having this event. It's called, I'm like, I'm in. There's a word hustle in it, I'm met it. And so it's kind of been like this mantra of mine since I was a kid. What I didn't know that I was doing is I was building this like grit and I was building this like metal to eventually be able to run multiple companies. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with a long backstory of mine. You guys can go to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all those places where you guys can see what I've done and do. I wanna get strategic with you guys because there's all this stigma right now around like personal brand and personal branding and why are you doing that and is it full of ego? Nope, it can be. But for me, a personal brand is basically your digital resume or it's your digital reputation. And for me, I pride myself deeply on my reputation. I spend a lot of time on it. It's everything to me. So I put it out there like crazy. And my digital reputation is really, really important for business. It's really important for networking. But if you're a scumbag, don't do this. Because it will wildly expose you. 
But if you're a good person, like it's your core, you're a very, very good person and you're genuine and you're authentic in your message, why wouldn't you tell everybody? Like, why wouldn't you try to help as many people as humanly possible? And what I learned at a very young age is my DNA is entrenched with the ability to help and the desire to help people, sometimes to a fault. But that drive has kept me doing these things over and over again, like creating a personal brand, launching a media company when three years ago I didn't have a website. My entire world was 12 investors for real estate. That was it. And I would get woke up in the middle of the night in this panic, like, the market's leaving me behind. I was afraid. So my fear, like, catapulted me into action. So three years ago, didn't know what to do. Was a real estate investor, doing extremely well, but if those 12 investors decided to, like, not invest in real estate anymore, my net worth was gonna go bye-bye. And I didn't like the way that felt. So I embarked on this lovely journey of social media and digital marketing that was really scary. And my video guy, Kyle's here, who saw me in the beginning, and it was like a train wreck. Day after day after day. And then I slowly got better. But what I did is I gave myself permission to fail, like I always do. Like, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Ooh, my friends are gonna make fun of me? <laughs> oh, darn. I had a mission, and I was not going to stop until I accomplished it. Not in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined it was going to transfer into this thing. The business opportunities that I get today from Instagram had that it'd be millions of dollars. No idea that was possible. On the airplane, coming here, one of the biggest I think trainers in all of real estate is DMing me like, hey, when can we get together? I'd love to have you on my show. I want you to come speak at my events. I'm like, How, when did that happen? Like, why is Tom Ferry blowing me up? And why is all this stuff happening? Because I speak my truth over and over and over and over again. And it's not that hard. It's the truth, <laughs> whatever that is for you. If your truth is you love flowers, that is your whole world. Tell everybody about flowers. If you're new into real estate, how many real estate people here? Couple, couple, nice, nice, perfect. I tell people that are getting into whatever industry and they're new, and they're like, I don't, know what to, I don't even know what to talk about. I'm new in this industry. All right, well, what do you like? I like flowers, cool. Turn the language of that industry into flowers. People do business with you because they have something in common with you. I get deals because I'm a good dad. Like, how is that strategic? I'm a good dad, and I blast it all over my Instagram stories because my family is really important to me. And then people will follow me, and they're like, oh, yeah, he is a good dad. Every day I see him doing what he said he was going to do. Like I said before, if you're a scumbag, don't do this. But if you're honest and you have a lot of integrity, you'll win. And you'll not win a little bit, you'll win huge. And the only reason I know is because it happened to me. And it's so easy, it suffocates me when now I'm having these huge meetings with big clients and I'm like, why aren't you doing this? It's too hard. No, it's not. I don't have the right camera. Yeah, you do. It's this thing right here. <laughs> My highest performing everything is right here. Best results, best likes, best metrics, best everything is like, I'm pissed right now. This day has been ridiculous. Like, that works the best and always will. So, because it's my truth and your truth is different than theirs and everybody is different. So I go speak at these big events. You're like, well, Andy, I, I'm never going to be able to do it like them. No shit. <laughs> You're not them. You don't have their same story. We're all raised a certain way, and, we, and we're raised with these rule books, right? And our rule books kind of make up who we are. And we get a little older, we create our own rule books that become our truths. But the more you tell your truths over and over and over and over and over again, the more comfortable you get doing it. 
it's business is the last thing I think about, which is odd because everybody thinks like that's my whole world. The first thing in the morning, as soon as my brain turns on, and sometimes it's three or four, depending on my little kiddos, it's 10 minute meditation, no matter what. And then I sit in gratitude for five minutes. And then I work out. And then I eat something really clean and healthy. And then I make breakfast for my family. And I play with my two little boys. My little wild animals are three and five. And then the nanny shows up, and I love my wife, but she sleeps until like eight. Good for her. And, <laughs> and then like I get the day ready, and then I go off and hunt. But I take care of like everything else first. Everybody thinks like business. And I'm like, it's not about the commas and the zeros in the bank. It's important. It's always going to be important to provide. But like, that's not where my legacy is being built. My legacy is being built by breaking 200 years of how all the dudes in my family operated. And for me, that was, that was everything. And that was my blessing and my gift. And I always get choked up. Doesn't matter if it's two people or 25,000. My why are those two little boys. And a big reason why I go so hard on social media is because if my plane crashes tomorrow, which I hope it doesn't, but if it does, they have two years of me speaking my truth. They have two years of me documenting my life. I closed millions of dollars in deals behind closed doors and boardrooms and just crushing it and everything's amazing. And they would have had some really cool family pictures of me, but that's it. I would give anything to hear a podcast from my great, 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 great grandfather, anything. So I feel a, a tremendous responsibility to make sure my kids don't have that same problem. So I've launched two podcasts. One is about real estate and real estate investing, which did really well. And we just launched the second one called the Andy Dane Carter Show, which launched a week ago. And it's already charting in the top 200. Yes. But that's all great and all, but it's literally for my kids. So I hope you guys watch it and I hope you guys listen to it and it's awesome, but it's for my great grandkids like 200 years from now. But this little thing right here, these are, these are my little monkeys. The, like, all you need is this. You don't need the cameras and the lens and the lighting. It's great, it makes you look better and sound better, but this is all you need. Your personal, your personal brand is right here in your hand. This is where everybody's attention is. All the platforms are all here, and all your excuses are here as well. And there are, I don't know how many times I've had this conversation with people. I'm like, just go do a Facebook Live tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna follow you and make sure you do it. I'm gonna go do one. And I'll get a text message or I'll get a video or something. And it's the same thing across the board. They'll go like this. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And then it's like, I'm gonna do it when I get a really good camera and when I pay my taxes, I'm gonna get some money back and I'm gonna get a camera and then it's gonna be on. And it just never happens. So our fears will keep us stuck, right? Who here has an Instagram account? Cool, most of you. Facebook? Twitter? Twitter's, I, I get it, Twitter, I get it. It's good for business and you know, stuff, but, but the attention of the planet right now is on Instagram and the rest are on Facebook. Who knows what the fastest growing demographic is in all of Facebook and Instagram right now? What age group? Anybody know? 40s? 40s? 55? 55 to 67 is the fastest growing demographic in all of social media, and it's not even close. So, you're welcome, you're welcome. Do you know the psychology behind it? Like. Where are their grandkids? Where are their kids? Where are the college? Like, everybody's attention is on this phone. And oh yeah, if you're trying to sell something, guess where else they are? On their phone. I don't care if you're selling flowers or pizza or if you have a brick and mortar store or if you're selling real estate or if you have some service you're trying to provide. 
The only way you're going to get it to somebody is if you tell them. It's this cool little secret of marketing. If you tell them, they might buy it. But what you have to do first, and this is where most people miss the mark in personal branding, is they're like, my name is Andy Dane Carter, I'm the greatest in real estate of all time, come buy my stuff now. <laughs> Why? Because I'm the greatest. No, you're not. Because I don't trust you. Right? Dating is the same way. Marketing and business is very similar to dating. Except when my wife and I met, she fell head over heels in love and was like, you're the greatest of all time. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> Just kidding. She'll tell a very different story. But you have to build trust in market. And how do you build trust in market? You tell the truth over and over and over again. The only way, I don't care what you do for a living, it does not matter. Without trust in market, you're not going to get to where you want to go. You're not going to have that level of connection with your client. I'm a huge customer service person. It becomes really easy when half of my day, they can just like follow the stuff my team's putting out or that I'm putting out. I'm building trust in market. The first ask I ever had, ever, was like a year and a half into this journey. I was just free, free, to put it all out there. I was branding, 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 branding. Because my goal is forever. Like I'm not doing this for two years. A two year social media experiment, nope, forever. Because I'm doing it for different reasons. But if you want to build trust in market, you have to be consistent with your message. Over and over. Your message can change because you're going to get older. Your life goals are going to change. But if your message is consistent with your authentic self, you will always win. Real estate, whatever you're in. I love the restaurant business. I own some restaurants and bars, and it's awesome. We built one of our bars, entire business, on Instagram. We bought it, hole in the wall, documented everything, and our third year anniversary is on the 15th of this month. The entire business model is built on Instagram. We have a line, number one bar in Long Beach. Thank you, Instagram. Like, this stuff is real, guys. Like, it's not going backwards. Like, I can't wait for it to go back to email marketing. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, email marketing works, it's fantastic. But there's more. Like, there's more you can do. Like, all this stuff works. Print marketing works. Like, that's a menu. If I owned this place, as soon as somebody clocked in, I would want an Instagram story of that menu or a special, and I, I would create a digital asset and put it out to the whole area, then I would geotag it, and then I would run a Facebook campaign for all these zip codes so they can walk. Like, the level of marketing that we can do today for pennies on the dollar compared to what used to happen 10 years ago is a joke. It cost 100 grand to do a one-minute commercial. I spend a lot less than that and do a lot more in volume. So I don't want to stand up here too long. I really want you guys to dive deep into Q&A because the strategies that you guys need to execute on this is literally in your pocket and your phone. Now, you need to post at least once a day. Three's kind of the magic number. Some people say five. It depends on your followers. And when you do this and you go all in, your friends are going to think you're crazy. Your family's gonna unfollow you, <laughs> for sure. It happens every time. When I first went all in, I'm putting like motivational quotes on pictures and I'm like trying to help and everybody's like, he's lost his mind. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to help and you think I'm nuts. Now they all wanna work for me. <laughs> like I told you it would work, I knew it. I'm the kind of person where it's like, if you tell me it's a bad idea and I'm going in the wrong direction and I'm crazy, I'm like, perfect. I'm on the right path. So I just want to encourage you guys to just to test it. Do a six month test. See what this thing looks like. What's the worst that's gonna happen? Someone's gonna make fun of you? But I'm gonna stay on one platform just because it's so like ridiculously relevant right now and it's Instagram. That was the majority of the hands that went up, so I want to touch on that. How many people here do at least one Instagram story a day? 
It's like one, two, three, four, five. This is, uh, this is obnoxious. I'm gonna get sick to my stomach right now. How many post in their feed once a day? That's funny, same people, that's odd. Why aren't you? What's the difference between the Instagram and the Facebook aspect? What's the difference between what? The Instagram and Facebook aspect. I mean, I don't know if you're wrong, I do a lot of Facebook stuff, but versus the Instagram. For sure. So for me, it has to do with like where your net person is you're trying to reach. If you're trying to just brand, you have to do both. People are leaving Facebook like crazy. Really? But they're going to be coming back. But a lot of people are jumping. There are a lot of people that I know, a lot of our clients, they don't even have Instagram accounts because they've been crushing Facebook for so long. You're probably the same way, right? So there's nothing wrong with it. But what if you had a Ferrari and a Rolls? Right? What if you had a 45 unit building that was netting you 25,000 cash every month and then you own the hotel across the street that was kicking you off 100 grand? You'd be like, yeah, I probably should get the hotel. So there, there's no wrong answer. There just might be a better thing for you to implement in your business that might net you bigger results. And they're probably on both. So your clients probably have both. But if you're only focusing on Facebook, it's probably because you're comfortable there, right? You're comfortable on Facebook because you've been doing it for so long and it's native to you as a person. That will 100% always make you lose. Because until you're willing to go out of your comfort zone, and get kicked in the teeth and get made fun of and have to figure something out, you won't have the metal for when the next platform comes, like whatever it's called. Because a lot of people thought Twitter was gonna be the biggest thing forever. And that's just not true. And if you go back and you listen to the companies that went out of business, when the radio was the greatest thing ever and then the TV came along, we're in that same flow. And if any of you guys know Gary Vee, you've probably heard about this. Yes? So you just said the demographic that looks at social media the most is a little older than me. But That's the one that's growing the most, not the one that's necessarily looking the most, but yes. Growing the most. Um, but we don't know how to effectively use it. Because to me, Instagram is pretty lights and pretty faces and perfect lights. Facebook, people share a little more stories. I think a lot of times on Instagram, people don't understand how to read the story. They don't understand the flow, and then you think you have to put all these perfect, you know, this visual together that looks like a storefront. Are you speaking saying, of they, the whole seven billion people, or just you? No, it's what it's it's the business owners and the folks that I speak to on a daily basis mm -hmm. of my age range that do not know how to use Instagram from a business perspective. One hundred percent, I completely agree with you. So there's a huge piece for you to educate them, right? Because they could now come to you as the person that knows how to do those things. Running an Instagram ad is no different than a Facebook ad. And now there's a little button you can click on the Facebook ad that runs it on Instagram for you. You can create an ad on Facebook and it asks you, do you want this on Instagram? Sure. So as you build that, and as it's, I work with clients that have never been on social media. They're like, Insta, what? but I will slowly help them educate their clients. And it's fun to watch a bunch of people that are a little bit older on Instagram at parties, and it blows my mind. I think the challenge, this is what I hear, a lot of times people want to share their story, for me as an example, but I don't necessarily like it when people are talking about what grocery store they went to. So that's what happened with Facebook. All of a sudden hmm? people were showing Every single minute of every part of their day, and mm -hmm. the, when their granddaughter pooped on the body, mm -hmm. I don't really care about that. But being able to talk about the real issues and really what's happening, I think it is more organic on Instagram. But I feel like the demographic that is growing and that really are interested in it or looking don't know how to utilize it. True but it's still growing really, really fast. So I completely agree with you, but there's a thousand ways for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish. I wouldn't worry about everybody else. I would worry about what you want to get out of it. Like I get very laser specific with my clients. Like who's your client? What do you want to have happen? Let's get really clear. 
if I had my clients worrying about what other people might think on a platform, they wouldn't have a business because they'd be worried about somebody else's stuff. So for me, it's just like, what's gonna work the best for that platform for my company and for my clients? But from a personal branding standpoint, I don't really care if anybody follows me. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm telling my truth over and over and over again. So from a personal branding standpoint, that's what I do. Over, I had no idea it was gonna do what it did. But it's worked, and it keeps working, and I help clients, and it works for them. So I just follow the recipe. It's like a chef, you know? It's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Or if it's broke, fix it. You guys wanna move on to some Q&A so we can answer some maybe strategic questions? Because I'm sure some of you guys in here are like, how do I do this? What's going on? Yeah, in the back? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Um, so for those of us that live consistent lives, doing the same thing each and every single day, how mm -hmm. can we be creative and kind of present something new to our followers that follow us each and every day? Okay. What have you not shown them yet? Uh, maybe I show them where I work. I show them where I work out. I show them what, like, what I eat. I'm showing them about everything except for me in the bathroom, man. <laughs> right. I get it. <laughs> There's this awesome thing called ask. And when I have my clients that get stuck, like, Andy, what do I do? This is not converting. This is not selling. But, but, but I go, have you asked your clients what they want? No. Yeah. Cool. So you can create a series called ask. What's your name? Ted. Ted? Yeah. Ask Ted. <laughs> and then here's the thing, Ted, like you can, you can be perfect. Being vulnerable is a superpower. And if you haven't figured that out yet, please figure it out. Being wildly vulnerable will get you exactly what you want and you cut through all the BS. So if you're like, hey, what's happening, guys? You know what? I love you. Um, I'm struggling with what you guys want to see from me right now. Please leave in the comments below. Just just something you might want to either know about me or what I'm about. And you'll watch. Now you have two months worth of content to create. All right. Appreciate it. Hmm? Yeah, in the back. I run a business that's not a business. Then you don't have a business, you have a hobby, but go ahead. Actually, it's a free and public service. Okay. You move your account to a business account. It is a business account. So is there a way for me to do that in that that I'm not checking? You run an ad just like Facebook. Okay, I can see that. And I'll be more than happy to show you as soon as we wrap on stage. I'll only walk you through it step by step. Sounds like a Awesome. You guys want to? I can answer that too. In? But if you, you can link it directly within your Facebook business manager. Mm -hmm. There's literally on the left side hand of that that says Instagram and you link it right there. You can link, you can actually link any account. You can only do one to your Facebook manager, uh, but you'll see it there. It's mm -hmm. right in that menu. Thank you. Colossus has a question. Go ahead, young lady. Um, so what would you say is a good ratio for kind of personal stuff versus your business stuff? Because you don't want it to be like all plugging your business, but like what is kind of a good ratio? I, yeah, go ahead. I would, yeah, that's a really good question. There's not a perfect formula. Uh, I like to keep it really streamlined. Like, it, if you're going to do business, focus on one business and your personal. I wouldn't have seven business interests and 17 million personal interests. I like to keep it when I'm working with clients, and I do this every day. I'm in Radical Company and Ad Agency. We do all this stuff. So, um, what, what, and I tell my clients to absolutely especially when they run a small business to use their personal social media to promote their business but I promote one business and I you know I don't there's no perfect formula to the answer that you know in these guys I'll let them get their response but um, I would keep it to one business and your and your personal but a lot of times what you find is your personal brand interacts with your business a lot 
you're running the business, you're doing the business, I'm in the business. That's, you know, how, how often are we, we work 80% of our lives, I think, or something, you know, enormous like that. So a lot of those things interact, so it's probably more than you realize. Uh, and then I don't think there's the, a formula per se, but I would not, you know, promote seven businesses and your personal at the same time. Yeah, one thing I would, I would add to that, it's a great question, and I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the question that we get a lot when people are first starting to build a personal brand is like, when do I go to a Facebook page versus like my Facebook profile? And so for me, when I was, when I was in that, that stage of the process, you know, I created the page as quickly as possible because you're gonna to migrate to the page eventually anyways, so you're just kind of wasting time on any, any amount of time that you don't spend on it. And then you can invite all your Facebook friends to like that page, You'll find out in that process that you know you may have a thousand Facebook friends, a hundred of them like the page. That means there's 900 of them that weren't really interested in listening to your business content or seeing your business content, but they may want to see pictures of you and your family, you and your horses, like you know things like that. Um, so it's very specific, obviously by industry. You know, if you're a financial advisor, you're probably not going to show as much personal content and maybe a little bit more streamlined on the professional side. Um, but my business partner, Joseph, who's here somewhere, you know, one thing that he said that I've remembered always and keep it in front of mind is that, you know, I love when people say like, oh, it's not personal, it's just business. Like, it's all personal. It's all personal. Um, and, and what I know is that, that people that want to do business with you, they want to know the personal stuff. And when the market really starts to correct itself, which it's going to, like things have been it's really coming. good for a <laughs> long time, when the market does correct, they're gonna keep doing business with the people they feel like they know personally. And if you've built that relationship with them, then you're gonna have the upper hand when that happens. Um, so that's my biggest piece of advice to people right now is to make sure that they are building those relationships and that those relationships you know, go outside of just business content so that when the market does turn and they have options of who I'm gonna to go to to give my business, that they're gonna to go to the one that they feel like they know. And they're gonna know you because they see what you're doing with your sons you know, on the weekend. They don't just see you going up there trying to pitch them something every time they see a post. 100%. And this is a people sport. Like, business is a people sport. So, like, the more that you can let them into who you are, you never know where that tripwire is going to be. I've got two different agents that work for me that have got two massive listings because they had dogs and so did the clients. <laughs> and they posted a lot about their dogs. <laughs> And they had that relationship and they had that connection. So when they went into the meetings, they didn't even talk about real estate, they talked about dogs. <laughs> so you don't know where that tripwire is. And a big thing for me is if your page is perfect, everything is this perfect something, I'm like, e e I don't trust you at all. <laughs> like nothing's bad, everything's just like ice cream and whatever every day, like get out of here. So I like to see the, the person. I like to see your truth. Like that's just it's it's my thing. Like I want to see your truth so I can make an executive decision on whether I want to do business with you or not. Andy, question for you. So you talked about growing up, you didn't know it, but you were building grit, right? This mm -hmm. armor to go after stuff. So how are you building grit in your kids? Like what opportunities are you presenting them? What's their day to day so that they can build grit like you did? I make them fight every day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rub some dirt in. That's right. Like, we have a cage at the house. No, I, it's a really good question, and I get asked it a lot, because I was raised with this, like, it's me, and I'm going to figure this out. And it's, it's a fear of mine, to be perfectly transparent with you guys. Like, I'm afraid, because we live in the nicest neighborhood that I drove through one time when I was a kid. Like, I, I just, it's, it's different. So for me... I'm really trying to strategically let them fall, but be able there to like, I love you, and this is not gonna sting that bad, but you're gonna eat shit sometimes. It's important to me. You guys? I have four boys, so I feel- Yeah, you get it. You know, yeah, you I get, get it. it. Uh, I, you didn't ask me, but I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am not a very vocal father, actually. But what I do is I lead by example. Mm. And so I, you know, I leave a fairly clean life. Uh, we've all made a lot of mistakes with a lot of trials and tribulations. I'm tr trying to be transparent about that. 
So it's not about being perfect, but it's about being there. Um, and so, you know, you get up every morning, you take them to school, you do things, you coach basketball. There's no perfect formula. And, everyone, and all these kids are going to have their own personalities uh, and do their own things. But I think if you show them rather than tell them, it goes a long way. Agreed. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> That's why I appreciate those answers. <laughs> yes? I was going to ask, um, I've heard that you should have a website, a Facebook page, and an Instagram page. Is that true? Do you need all three of those things? Since Instagram is the hot thing now. Yes, for a lot of reasons. But the short answer is you want to feed traffic. So I push all this stuff on social media, and it's not a push, it's more of a like, hey, if you want to know more, but not like, hey, if you want to know more, buy it over here. It's more like, hey, there's this place that has more information. If you would like, that's great. And there's a free book that I have, and if you guys want to go to my website, I'm not going to plug it or whatever, but the book's free, and it's called 100 Doors, and it's a blueprint to like crush real estate. It's only 100 pages. My website is andydanecarter.com, but the reason why I have is a that is so I can offer free products if I want. I have a place for my podcast to live. I have a place for my YouTube channel to live. I have a place to provide value to my clients. So I feed all my social media platforms back to that website. Because then I can actually look at the metrics and make a decision. Like you, you need to have math and data to run any company. start Go ahead. Uh, you know <laughs> that's kind of a tricky one because it's very it gets very micro real fast but without looking at it uh, I like to have consistent themes and branding uh, you know you talk you know Andy talked about branding and you know the platforms being where you can brand I would at least have you know consistent if it's a business and then you're trying to keep a business and not personal have your logo in each image in the corner or have an element that makes it, you know, tie it back to the brand, to the business that makes someone know, okay, this isn't a person doing a personal thing. This is a brand trying to sell something. I think the key with business, especially on Instagram, is, and Andy talked about this, and it's the same with personal branding as it is business, is tell a story, be transparent. Um, just putting whatever you do, insert widget here and putting $99 isn't going to work. Uh, selling, hard selling all the time, so which sounds like you're not doing, which is good, but I would encourage you whether you use a color or use your logo or do some things to create some branded elements that create consistency so that someone sees it, they pay attention. When they pay attention, they go to your call to action. They go to your call to action, which is really good because you're driving them where you want them to do something, right? And then it leads from there. I mean, that's a very broad answer, but those are things that I would so first steps. Like, there's always something that is always there, the same thing, and mine is just kind of like, you know, a picture and a quote or something, but because I'm doing it myself, you know, it's like that version. It's not someone branding it. Yeah, I think the important thing to know for when you're first getting started is, like, you don't have to send off, you know, you don't have to get some graphic designer to create some incredible logo and have some team that's doing stuff like there's like I, for the first year I was using apps like iPhone apps sometimes multiple apps like put it in this one do this with it then put the text with it with this one put a like you said watermark with it with this one then post it um, but something like a watermark you know logo 
it can literally just you being a watermark of just like your Instagram handle or like your business name. Like it doesn't have to be something like super, you know, a professional, but it's just something that's consistent. And like maybe it's, you know, if you're posting twice a day, there's one post that goes out every morning that looks kind of like this format. And then there's one post in the afternoon that's kind of more along this format and so that you have some type of a consistent, when people are at least looking at your profile, they're like, oh, that's not just someone's random personal page where they're just throwing stuff up, what they're doing, there's a rhyme or reason to the way they're doing it. Uh, but again, all this stuff can be done from your phone. Like iPhone apps, you can make stuff that people will swear that you've got a team of graphic designers and it's just because of all the capabilities of these apps and it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and here's the, like, here's the little secret for everybody. Uh, everybody sucks in the beginning. <laughs> I don't care if you're a professional athlete. I don't care if you're whatever you do. The greatest person that you look up to was awful in the beginning. And they didn't know what to do, so they hired a coach. They hired a mentor. They figured it out. They took the punches. They ate it. Here's a perfect example. When you learn how to walk, you don't just like, I'm out of here. You stand up, you fall, you get messed up, you figure it out. Over time, you're bouncing off the couch. This is no different. So, like these guys said, a theme is important. And what all these platforms are like, especially the entire algorithm, is consistency. So if you're consistently posting at like 7.42 in the morning, and you, it's like there's like a specific theme with a the color, red, pink, green, whatever, that helps. But you need to be specific with like, if this is your business page, and even if it's like, you're just kind of testing it, use logos and use some kind of consistency with it. But there's really no wrong way to do it. Not doing it is wrong. Uh, actually on that note, yeah. uh, I'm curious, like an uh, idea post, something you guys thought of, you're like, oh, this is terrible. This is never gonna produce anything. And it actually ended up working out really well. Can you guys like, think of a specific <laughs> example that, that comes to mind with this? Happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Not an acceptable answer. All the time. But here's okay. So the first YouTube push that we did. did There's some guys here that were there when I was doing it. It was literally awful. I was in this boardroom and it was very scripted. And I used to stutter really bad as a kid. I'm severely dyslexic. I'm I was just awful on camera. I just did not. I was fighting every single second of it. And you could tell. <laughs> so I was trying to do this stuff and forcing it and forcing it and forcing it. And it just didn't feel like it was me. And so I was tired of it. We've been filming all day. It was all trash. And I grabbed my camera guy and I'm like, look, I gotta go value six properties right now. Like, you're just gonna come with me. And I started the thing off with like, what's happened everybody? Uh, so I'm gonna go look at some properties. I'm gonna walk you guys through some stuff. And I walked through and I spoke what I normally just thought about and took some notes for myself, for my investors, and that got uploaded to YouTube. And the next morning I went from 1,000 views to 38,000. So my manager called me, he's like, uh, you're doing more of those and that's all you're doing from now on. <laughs> because that was my truth. Like, that was what I was just doing naturally. And I had no idea that was going to work. I thought for sure, me sitting in, like, in a boardroom telling you exactly what to do was way better. And I was wrong. But it happens all the time. Like, there's stuff from like, this is gonna crush it with the 17 to 30 year old male demographic, and like it kills it with the 50 year old ladies. I'm like, <laughs> oh, so more of that apparently. Hmm? Every post, every one that I think will <laughs> suck actually means good and it's always, if it looks too good, it never performs. So it's That's like, true. it's the more organic, the better, yep. uh, you know. I think the important thing to, to understand is that no one ever remembers a bad post. Like <laughs> ever, ever, ever. No one, and, and we think this, like, like when you're nervous and you're, you're hesitant and you're self-conscious and you think like, that there's going to be like a group of people at a bar Saturday night going like, hey, did you see that post I put out Tuesday morning? Like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed for it. Like, nobody remembers this. Like, no one. Like, and, and with the whole like posting once a day, three times a day, five times a day, I just don't think you can post too much. The number of the percentage of people that are actually seeing it when you post, like, mm -hmm. just putting it out there. Like, that's what's important because the post that you didn't put out could very well be the one that absolutely took off and the next day you woke up with a thousand new followers 
Um, the funniest example for me is we did this stupid video of me shaving my beard off. And we set up like five camera angles. We're like, this is gonna be the most viral video. It's gonna be awesome. And we posted it and it got like just nothing, like nothing. And nothing for like six months. And it got, finally it ended up with like 17,000 views after six months. I'm like, well, that was great use of time. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this other site shared it. Next thing I know, Lil Wayne shared it. Randy Couture shared it. Jennifer Hudson shared it. Good Morning America shared it. Like 13 other sites shared it. And now it's got like 78 million views. <laughs> and like I'm kicking myself because like it had nothing of substance other than me just shaving my beard. Like it literally, like I didn't say anything. It didn't like send people to a website. It didn't like, I don't even know if it had my name in it. Like I literally like, don't even know. They're just like, and one of the websites was this, was uh, cool, it was like the Spanish site. There's like this, it was this um, social media platform in, in Mexico. And that one has like 48 million views. And we were like going to Mexico that next, that next week and we were headed down there. I was like, someone's gonna see me. Like, someone's gonna see me, they're not gonna know me. It's just gonna be this like bearded guy. But like literally in that, and, and the unfortunate thing in that video, so we set my daughter up. So the whole premise was she'd never seen me without a beard. She was 10 months old, I'm gonna shave it off, didn't wanna freak her out. So I'm like, I'm gonna shave in front of her. So she sees the process, get it on camera, something cool will happen, not really. She, we put her up on this platform over here at Liberty Fine Cuts and Shaves, a little shout out. Uh, we put her up on this platform and literally she leans forward and just starts falling. And my wife caught her like at the last second. So this video now has like 500,000 comments, all saying that we're the worst parents <laughs> on the planet for putting her up there, how could we be so stupid? My wife wasn't paying attention. I was just an idiot. And then the other two, like that's probably two thirds of the comments. The other comments are about how disgusting and like grotesque and like unclean beards are and, and how like, just like the, this most ridiculous, none of it's good. None of it's good. Like that whole, like that whole, that whole like, it, what's it like, any publicity is good publicity. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is not good publicity, like at all. Like, like I'm pretty sure like the Me whatever the Mexican version of DSS is, like I'm probably like on their like hot list or something. But uh, but yeah, but like just the the point is just put it out there and just don't look at it. I say that knowing that it's impossible. But just put it out there and just like don't don't really care. Like again, like I love how Andy's like whole mission has nothing to do with anyone else. It has nothing to do with how many likes or how many shares or how many comments it got. Like he's doing it for something way bigger. Like he's doing it for legacy, he's doing it for his kids. And that's really not of any importance of if someone liked it or if they made fun of it or, or any of that. It's just putting it out there. I have one thing, uh, you know, Andy talked about $100,000 TV commercials and I've been in the ad agency business a long time, but there's something called reach and frequency mm -hmm. uh, in media. You know, you pay, how many times do you hear the same radio spot over and over and over again? How many times do you see the same TV spot over and over again? And you aren't like, why did you see that again? So when you think about repeating content, as well as the volume of content, mm -hmm. you need reach and frequency. Yep. And reach is the platforms, and you gotta use ad tools and different things to do that, but frequency is the amount of times that they see it, the same person sees it. So you can't d repeat it enough. And so, especially if it's a business and you're selling something or even, even any kind of message, uh, you want that frequency. And then the last thing on like the quality of content, uh, one of our clients broke the internet this, this summer, um, Rich, Dr. Rich Constantine, who's actually part of this. So it was a grainy video of doing a dance challenge and uh, we officially still have the most views on Facebook this year in the world. Nice. Uh, 150 million views and counting and uh, it wasn't, who knew that was gonna happen? <laughs> I told him it would. <laughs> That's why I hired you. Yes. I'm the I sell a ton of digital advertising all over this market for Fairway. And 
we have the capability of taping in all of your social networks. So we can do Instagram, Facebook, and I struggle with telling my customer how to use that on the book. We've done lots of different contests. We've done, you know, we just upload fabulous customers that are happy, whether it's car dealer or furniture or whatever. But how do I really know that I'm giving my customer, which is my truth, mm -hmm. my truth, mm -hmm. is I've been in the business 25 years, <coughs> I'm very honest with my customers. I want them to use every aspect that can make them grow because that's going to make me grow with them. But how do I know what to put on a billboard that people see for seven seconds on a digital, like right here at Bond Secure or Church Street? How do I know what they put on there from their social media is really what's working and that's what people want to see? So I'm going to tread very, very lightly <laughs> because I have a wildly strong opinion about outdoor billboards. I've used them. My clients have used them. My biggest problem with outdoor billboards, but I have a fix. So I'm going to sound like a villain for a second, but then I'm going to fix it. Just stand with me. You can't tell me how many people saw that billboard. You can't, and you can't tell me how many people stopped and wrote down the information on it, right? And there's no way to prove if anybody saw it, right? And that sounds terrible, right? And this is why I love the digital space, because I can tell you how old they are, how much money they make, and all that stuff in between, right? But what I've told my clients that like using billboards, let's run some kind of campaign around it, right? And try to use hashtags or try to use something that's measurable because these billboards are three, four, five, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 a month. You can't measure it. So I try to tell them to do a contest or do something, take a picture of it, post it in their feed and use a certain hashtag because you can track it. And now you have something that's measurable for them. But for me, I'll take like a print piece of marketing and I do it all the time in real estate. I'm like, you spent $10,000 printing these flyers. Cool. How many people read it? How many people wrote down that information that's going to call you? How many emails did you get from that so you can follow up with them later? It is impossible. So what you do is you create this digital asset that you can then repurpose for the end of time all over these digital platforms that live forever. So that space, I think, is going to come down in price eventually, but there's no reason why you can't repurpose it into a digital asset. And then you use the hashtag and you do a fun campaign with your client and then you show them that you're not just a traditional person that can do digital or just these, these boards, but you can actually create inventive ideas for your client and think outside the box. Run a Twitter campaign, run a, like something on Facebook and say, you know, the first 20 people that take a picture of this billboard and post it, they get a gift card to this restaurant or just do something to pull the attention. Because I'm sorry, most, most people that are driving are looking down at their phone. They sure as you know what aren't looking up at a billboard. So there's ways to fix that. It just takes a little more work. Good answer. It's the only thing that's trackable. Offline to offline. Offline to online. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Carl's. What's up, man? <laughs> okay, so it's a very, this is actually a very specific question. So I've tried a few different things as far as captioning. Captioning goes, it's a two-part question. So captioning, I've had more likes and things like that with the witty one-liners that, that I post, you know, we get X number of likes versus when I kind of go, go in depth and give some, what I feel like is content on the caption of the Instagram post. So I'm having more interaction with the likes of things with the one-liner, which most common is just a joke, or it's a real smart, you know, the thought of the day, which has no content behind it. But when I really go in depth, I am getting more interaction, but I'm not getting the same number of likes. So the first part of the question is, is there a metric or a thought process behind what's better for a specific person, or is that literally personal preference? Second, um, in my story, I'll be doing real short, animated books. So I like to bring those into my feed. Is the best way to bring them the ending photo as a photo or bring the small video into the feed so people can view it 
right? Like literally what's been shown to be the best way to attract the most likes, build your following, get your message out there? I'm going to let these guys answer like on the content side, but just from the technical side, and I've told my clients this all the time, you kind of, yeah. you got to stop paying attention to follows and likes and look at overall engagement. Uh, you've got to look at the analytics and look at it because I'll go look at my posts and, you know, I'll have X number of likes and I'll look at the next one and it'll have, you know, 300 more, but I'll look at total overall engagement, which is feed, uh, you know, views, uh, comments, likes, everything that is kind of the secret sauce of what you want from the post and the overall engagement metrics, which you can actually see as long as your account is set up as an Instagram, Facebook uh, business page. That's another kind of trick to remember. You need to change your personal account to a business account within Instagram so that you can see the metrics. Uh, they may have changed it where you don't have to do that, but I'm pretty sure that you do. And it doesn't really, no one, it doesn't go alert your, Boop, boop, boop. Like you suddenly turned it to a business account. This is not a real person anymore. Yeah, you know, none of that's going to happen. Uh, you can do it, but it gives you a lot of insight into the analytics. So I would look at total engagement and not likes or follows. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean it's it's personal preference of what you're trying to get out of it. Like what's like what's the end goal? Um, my big thing that I'm so focused on right now, and I struggle day to day with how often to use it, but it's call to action. Like for me, to do a post without a call to action is not even worth, worth posting. But we all know those people that every single post says, you know, comment yes if you agree, you know, tag someone if you agree, like comment, you know, spell out celebration letter by letter like, like anyone has the time to do this. Um, and, and we all know what they're doing there, but like you have to give them something to say. They're like, so think, just think about, the mindset and the psychology and try to reverse engineer what that person's saying. So there's, they're, they got seven minutes, you know, they're in the restroom or they're like in a line somewhere and they scroll through Instagram or Facebook and they've literally got a limited period of time to see your post, read it, and then decide whether or not they liked it or not. If they really liked it, maybe they're gonna hit like. If they really, really liked it, maybe they're gonna share it. But when it comes down to like comments, which to me are, are most important, or, or tagging someone, like for them to just come up with a comment, just like out of the blue, come up with a comment of like something to say that like their opinion on that, versus if you prompt that, like if you're talking about you know goal setting for 2019, you know comment below what's what's the biggest goal that you have for next year. Now you gave them something to actually talk about and create a conversation in there. And then when you go immediately respond to it, which by the way, if you're not responding to people's comments and you're trying to build a personal brand, it's an absolute joke. Like to think that, like to have the audacity to say that like I'm so, I'm so big and bad and I've got so much going on that I can't reply to this comment, it's absolutely ridiculous. But go into comment as quickly as possible and create a conversation. That's what these platforms are rewarding now. They want conversations. They want it to be like your friends and family and make this like an organic environment that's happening. And that's really the only way to do that is to ask them a question that is thought provoking that they then know what they're gonna reply and then try to create a little conversation, not just like a little pound emoji, you know, like, like, they're like, man, that's interesting. That's interesting that that's your goal for 2019. Like, what steps have you put in place to make sure that you accomplish it? Now they're responding. Now you're going back and forth. And that's what gets just ranked and ranked and ranked and ranked and ranked within the algorithm and performs well. So I think it starts with what's the end goal, but then making it super easy. Like, the, 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 the least amount of friction that you can create for somebody and make it just super easy for them to engage with your content. That's why it needs to be everywhere. Because if I want to find C, you know, CJ stuff, like I don't want to just have to go to Instagram. What if I want to be on Facebook and I want to see his stuff? Well, I want to see it there. That's less friction for me to follow your content. But by asking me questions and engaging me, it makes less friction for me to want to start a conversation with you. And then all of a sudden you build a community of people that are talking to each other. And that's ultimately what you're trying to build, is a group of people that, that connect with each other because they connected with you, so they have that in mind through the law of attraction. But because you're asking a question, now someone said, like, my main goal, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds next year. And you got somebody else in your community that their goal is they want to run a half marathon next year. And now they're all of a sudden commenting each other, now they're suddenly DMing offline, and they're becoming, like, 
you know, friends. Like legitimately, this happens, and uh, and that's what you're ultimately trying to create. That's a really good point too. It's it's super important to actually post videos and post still stuff. But I mean, it goes back to like. I think it was a question that I asked earlier, like, ask them. It's the hardest thing in all of social media is to get somebody to comment and share. It takes half a nanosecond to like something. If somebody took the time out of their day to like and comment on something say, that one, one you nice brought question. value to, I would respond. And if you don't want to respond to them there, maybe do like a little emoji, whatever. But I hit up a lot of my comments in my DM. like. Why'd you like that post so much? I ask. Because now I'm getting the content that my clients and my audience want. Like I'm just giving them what they want over and over again. I'm sitting here right now because Tyler and I connected on a post like a year or so ago, even longer, and then we connected in the DM and now we're doing business together. This happens to me over and over and over again. So these posts that you put all this time into and these videos, and then you get five, 10, 20, 30 comments, and then you comment on all of them, if you take the time to go back into each one and send them a personal DM and you ask them a question, you're gonna get a fan, or you're at least gonna somebody, have somebody who has way more respect for you than the person that did it. And now you're separating yourself. And now you're literally starting to find these little groups like you were talking about, like. Let's put this thread together that's in the Instagram DM of like, what are our challenges for our body for the next six months? Now you're creating community. So like, that's for me is what social media is. It's social. So be social. Don't just post something and say, I'm the greatest, and then off to the next. <laughs> One more. I had a question, uh, well I'm just getting started with real estate, but I'm also really into uh, health and fitness, and so I'm really looking at podcasts, um, so I'm wondering if you have any advice on that, I know you mentioned you have two podcasts, and I, I love listening to those, so I wonder, you know, how, how could you kind of engage an audience with that and give information, because I'm about giving information, not just showing off that, hey, I've got muscles, stuff like that, so, <laughs> you know, which is all, most of fitness on Instagram right now, unfortunately. I completely agree. <laughs> so you do exactly what you just said. Like you literally just answered all of your questions. You like fitness and health, but you're going to be getting into real estate. Now, you probably haven't closed 300 deals in real estate, but you've probably worked out a lot. So you blend those conversations. You blend the conversation of real estate in with your health. And maybe it's just like a 60 second post, you're like, I just crushed this workout, I feel incredible, I'm gonna go have a green smoothie, and then I'm gonna go preview six properties. There's this one in particular, it's a four bedroom, two bath. It's like $60,000 under market. If you're in the market, shoot me a call, shoot me a DM, let's go take a look at it, or let's go sit down for coffee and find out exactly what you need. And then it's like, I like that guy, I work out too. Like, it's those little things like that that'll take the fear out of, well, I don't know what removing contingencies mean. Well, that's fine, but you know what it feels like to go to the gym and so do they. So you blend those conversations until you learn the language of real estate because you already speak the language of health and fitness. And vice versa. Podcasting is the easiest, fastest way to grow anything on earth right now. It's the cheapest thing you can possibly do. It's just about free, and you can reach the whole planet. What people seem to forget because it's all about comments and likes now when you get like 40,000 views on something, it's like you're standing in the middle of the Super Bowl and it's packed and you're like, this is me. <laughs> like people forget that impact. You have this wild power to in, like impact people. So if I was you and I'm new into real estate, which I think is awesome by the way, just go full gas at your truth, but blend in some of the real estate because I have a lot of clients that come to me for coaching and I'm like, it looks like you're a fitness trainer. I didn't know you actually passed the test to become a licensed agent. Post a house every once in a while, not just like, this is me at the gym all shredded. Go f if you don't follow The Rock, I, yeah. Yeah, The Rock does this better than anyone. Agreed. He will, he'll be on a movie set and he'll be talking about Under Armour gear and he'll have a protein shake. 
He blends his businesses and his interests better than anyone on in Instagram, mm-hmm. from my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not, I don't even watch his movies, but I, I respect his marketing, who, and I'm sure he's got a lot of people, but I think it's also him, because he's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's doing this, and it's not real estate, but if you go look how he blends his businesses and his content and his interests, it's amazing. So I'll, I'll wrap it up here. Um, guys, so, guys, guys, we can't hear these people speaking. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. The last thing I would say to you, man, that as you're getting started, especially like if you, if you start a podcast, which you should definitely start a podcast, there's all this pressure that can build up, right? Like, all right, I got a podcast now. <laughs> What's the best recording audio equipment? What's the best microphone? Yeah. Like. Do I use Libsyn? Do I live, do I use Spreaker? Do I use you know this? Do I should I start with Anchor? Like you know all this all this stuff. Like none of that stuff matters. Like just go do it. Like pick one and just go do it. And and one thing that, that drives me crazy when I see it done the wrong way, and I love it when I see it done the right way, is this idea of like fake it till you make it. There's a big difference between <laughs> being confident and fake it till you make it. And so we talk about this idea of like being a fraud. And I've done posts before, I said like, I'm a fraud. If you go after a goal that you've never accomplished, you've never had a podcast, but you're gonna go crush a podcast. You've never done it before, but you're just like, I'm gonna crush it. Like I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to kill this podcast, but I have zero experience doing it. That is a fraudulent environment for you to be in. And I think that's incredible. That's very different than fake it till you make it like pretending like you've got years and years of podcasting experience. And when you get your first guest on, you're like being all like, you know, super professional, like, like you've been doing this for your, your entire life. Like for me, my podcast is just absolutely an excuse to talk to cool people about what they're doing and learn from them. Like when people ask me like, hey, how many uh, downloads are you getting? I have no idea, I don't even know where to go to find out how many downloads I get on the podcast. It's literally an excuse to sit down with Andy in Huntington Beach and find out all about him for an hour. Like, I can hit someone up, and you can hit someone up on Instagram tonight in the direct message and say, hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast. I've been following you for two years. I really love how you do this, this, and this. It resonates with me, and I think it'll resonate with my audience on the podcast. I'd love to sit down for 20 minutes. Don't ask for two hours. I'd love to sit down for 15, 20 minutes at your convenience what time would work best on Monday or Wednesday? Versus, hey, I'd just love to talk to you for an hour on Monday or Wednesday. Like, what? Like, who? No, I'm not going to, why would I know? Oh, I'm going to talk to you for an hour on your podcast. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm down. Like, it's literally just an excuse. Like, it's, it's, it's the easiest barrier to entry to have incredible conversations with people that are doing awesome things. Um, so there's no excuse not to do it. Um, and it, I think you'll be surprised at what it turns into. Uh, you do one, you do two, you do three. They're difficult. They're not easy. Like, it's hard to have a conversation on a podcast, but you just do it. And then you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. Next thing you know, you look up and you've got like an incredible guest on there. You're like, how did I get here? Like, how did I get here? It's just because you just, you just went for it. But again, you're in a fraudulent environment when you go first go out and do that. But you have to have the confidence to be able to say, I'm still going to do it anyways. Um, and I think that that's, that's super important, but make it you, right? Like just make it tailored to you. There's a business and biceps that I was just thinking of. There's mm-hmm. a podcast called Business and Biceps. Mm-hmm. You it's can big. do something like that. You know? It's a big podcast. Guys, appreciate uh, all the questions. If you have other questions, we're going to be around hanging out. I don't know how much time we have to, to hang out here, but, um, but really, really appreciate the questions. Guys, round of applause for Andy. Yeah. guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of My Living Legacy. We're going to do something um, special here, and and this may be something we do every week. It may be just every now and then, Uh, but I really want to show my appreciation and gratitude uh, for people that have been following and engaging in the content um, for a a long time. And and honestly, it just means the world to me. And so I wanted to call out a couple of people. Um, The first is Christopher Vester. 
The second is Joshua Cunningham, and the third is Granston Box. Uh, I could go on and on uh, about each of these three guys, uh, but what I want you guys to know specifically is that there have been times over the last year, year and a half, uh, where a message that I got from you, a DM that I got from you, a comment that I got from you, uh, really, really came at a good time uh, when I wasn't necessarily in the best frame of mind, like on one of those tough days that it, it came through and it gave me encouragement to keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, and I'm extremely grateful for that. All three of you uh, are doing awesome things. I appreciate the way you show up in the world. And I can't tell you how much it means to me that you would take the time and effort to engage in the content that I'm putting out. It means the world to me and just wanted to tell you, thank you. This is something that we're uh, going to be doing every now and then. Uh, but it's something that's extremely special uh, and important to me and just wanted to take this time today to tell you guys thank you. Thank you.